Which is better, the familiar 7 Rem Mag or the newcomer, the 7 PRC? That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. Gavin Gee here from UltimateReloader.com. We are back with Guy Miner. Thank you for joining me, Guy. Of course. This is a good one. We've been knee deep with the 7 PRC here on the channel. I personally built two rifles. We've compared all three of the different PRC offerings from Hornady. This guy right here is planning to try and take a Black Bear this spring with this 7 PRC right here. But one of the common pieces of feedback and one of the debates that we've seen in all of the comments on all these videos is, hey, you know, my 7 Rem Mag, you know, it can do everything the 7 PRC can do, so what are you trying to do here, right? This is the debate, is it not? It is, and as a guy who uh, has a long tradition of hunting with a 7 Rem Mag, <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting look at this yeah. new cartridge. So why don't we start at the beginning and talk about this cartridge, the 7 Remag that's been around forever, and then uh, talk about the 7 PRC, kind of compare the two, and by the end of the video, I think you should vote for which one you think is better, and I think I'll vote for which one I think is better. How does that sound? So, <laughs> sounds good, except if it's been around forever, I'm even older than yeah. the 7 Mag. Oh, man. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna ask you all to vote, too. So if you feel like voting now, well, actually, wait until you hear what we have to say, then vote. Okay? So let's start at the very beginning. The very beginning. Let's start before the, the 7 Rem Mag. How about that? Sure. To lead sure. up to Sure. In the 1940s, Mr. Roy Weatherby came out with his 7mm Weatherby Magnum, mm -hmm. which is actually a little hotter than the 7 Mag, mm -hmm. and it never really caught on. I think because it was only offered in the expensive Mark V Weatherby's for... Mm -hmm decades. So it was a proprietary cartridge. It was expensive to get into, but it caught enough people's imagination. Mm -hmm. And then some gun riders of the day went out with their own Wildcat 7mm Magnums and did a lot of hunting and got a lot of press on that, mm -hmm. prompting Remington to make their own 7mm Remington yep. Magnum. Uh, debuted in 1962, 60 years earlier than the PRC, <laughs> uh, which is kind of cool. And, and in the meantime, that 7 Mag, 7 Remington Magnum, really made a home for itself in both the hunting fields, it got used as a long-range target cartridge, and interestingly, the Secret Service picked it up for a while as their counter-sniper rifle. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, if you want heavier bullet weight, you know, the 300 Magnum is, it, it has been heralded as kind of like the upper edge of the practical hunting rifle, right? You, you had your 300 Weatherby Mag. Right. You've got your 300 Wind Mag. Seven is interesting because it pushes the bullet faster and you've got a little bit less recoil. So it's almost like pick your poison in a way. Right, I have uh, I got away from the 300 Win Mag in my sport weight rifles and went to the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, oh, 20, 25 years, 25 years ago or so, mm -hmm. because I shot the seven just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like, okay, I'm more comfortable with this. I could shoot it well wasn't getting that scope coming back towards mm -hmm. my eyeball. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just, it worked out really well. Yeah, seven is an optimization, I feel like, of, of the entire problem domain, you know? It's got good knockdown power, it's got good long range ballistics, but it doesn't just have that, that edge in recoil and, you know, and slower velocity that you'll have in the 300. So tell me this, so I've often wondered about the belts, right? It's, it's kind of like dual head sp spacing once you're reloading, right? You've right. got the shoulder and you've got the belt. And you kind of have to pay attention to both. So, so why do we have the belt in the first place? The belt is a relic from bygone days with the old 300 H&H &H and 375 H&H. &H, and those were long cartridges that didn't have much of a shoulder. And the reason for that is because they were not charged with conventional gunpowder at first. They were using cordite strands. Interesting. So they're long, <laughs> they're long, gently tapered cases, and the small <laughs> shoulders worked out real good with the strands of cordite. So you couldn't headspace on a non-existent shoulder, essentially. Yeah, the, the shoulders were tough, especially on the 300 H and H. You know, it's a beautiful looking cartridge, but it's a little bit tough to, to headspace on that. So that's where the belt came in, was okay. for headspacing. Yep. The cartridge moves forward. It stops on the belt. Yep. And that's your, your reference point, yeah. essentially, right? And, and you're right. You mentioned hand loading. As a hand loader, you basically just, you know, I start ignoring the belt and head spacing off the shoulder. 
and okay. that works that works great so all these other magnums that we had for years 264 one mag 300 one mag 338 one mag sub moment magnum all those retained the belt because the parent case is the, the 300 H&H. 300 yep. H&H, gotcha. Yep. gotcha. And same with the Remington, or excuse me, the Weatherby. Okay. You know, their whole lineup was belted. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, again, it was a holdover from the old H&H &H cases. Okay, so I have a story to tell. I just saw Steve Hornady a couple weeks ago at the Shaw Show. And first off, it was he had an enthusiastic response to see me, which was cool. I, I, I love Steve. I've interviewed him, you know, a couple times and all that. But... As he was leaving, as he was walking off, he was kind of shaking his hands in the air saying, like, who needs the belt? Get rid of the belt. We don't need the belt. Because we, we were talking about seven PRC, and I was, I was just telling him about how, you know, the results that we've gotten and all that. And, and ultimately, it's, it's true. And, and other big magnums, like the 300 rum, it, it doesn't have a belt. Nope. Right? So this is a trend, right? And it's kind of one of the biggest differences between these two cartridges. And we'll go into more of that uh, in, in a moment. But yes, uh, you mentioned, you're mentioned in, in the slides here that the 7PRC is very popular right now. Absolutely. When we were reviewing the uh, B14 squared Crest Bergara, that was the number one comment. Hey, if it's available in 7PRC, I want one today, right? Uh, do it in 7PRC. So like Hornady has really created a sensation yes. this year with this cartridge. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're taking a look at response because there's not that many of them out there yet. Mm -hmm. And components right. are hard to get, ammo's hard to get. Hornady's probably cranking out all they can. And barrel blanks are but, hard to get. I had yeah. to go straight to Bartline to get my one and eight twist seven millimeter blanks because that's a little faster than I'm, what's typical. I'm sorry you had to settle for Bartline. <laughs> <laughs> awesome not, barrels. Not, not, not settling at all. Awesome barrels. Yep. Um, so yeah, Seven Rem Mag has cemented itself as one of the most popular hunting rifle cartridges, and you know it's capable on elk. It's capable. It's fine for deer, right? Oh, oh yeah. Bear, right? It's versatile. It's available. So you know, why do we need something new, right? You know, and, and, and as, as a hunter going out to normal hunting ranges, mm -hmm. maybe you don't. Right. But, you know, the 7 Mag got introduced. There was no 7 Mag before those things showed up. Mm -hmm. And now this is just an evolution. This is another take on it. This is another way to look at and some improvements. Yeah. So. So let's get into some of those details. 7 PRC is the newcomer. It was announced, the SAMI announcement came the summer of 2022, so that was about mm -hmm. six months ago from today. And that included the cartridge specifications, the chamber specifications, the pressure rating, right? The recommended twist rate, a lot of information there. My friend Jim from Backfire, Jim Harmer, he did some early work building some rifles before it was even officially publicly announced. We got our hands on the rifle builder's kit. We built the full custom Bergar, we built the, the BAT and MDT ESS rifle, 22 inch and 28 inch. Kind of a fun project because we were able to look at the entire performance window. And this guy right here with the 22 inch barrel is a nice package with the suppressor. Oh yeah. You know, you've got quite a bit of ec extra length. Um, one and eight twist, that's another big thing. We already talked about the belt a little bit, you know, the, the twist rate is slower on the 7 rem mag. The twist right. rate is faster on the PRC. And then the case, of course, was also designed optimally with all of that in mind. And Hornady coming up with those long 175 ELDX mm -hmm. and that 180 mm -hmm. match version. Yep. Um, that's what the fast twist barrel and those long bullets... They're made for each other. Absolutely, and whoa, those 180 ELDMs, those just out of the factory ammo and out of my reloads have shot really, really well. Oh yeah. Out of out of this guy. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, in that range. Let's let's say that the 175 for the 7 PRC is the the optimal bullet weight. Let's compare a few different bullets. Talk about how they can differ. Sure. I've used the 175 Sierra Game King mm -hmm. and the Nosler Partition, both 175s, and they're good bullets. They do what they're supposed to do, and I thought that that Game King was probably like the ultimate long-range 
bullet mm -hmm. for a seven millimeter hunting bullet for a long time. And then I took a look <laughs> at those two old favorites of mine compared with this ELDX. Mm -hmm. ELDX significantly longer. Right, 1.562. 1. 1. Yeah. Wow. Compared and to 1.41 and 1.365, that's a huge difference. And because of that, look at our BCs. We have G1 BCs of 0.689 for the ELDX, and then the Sierra is mm -hmm. at 0.533, which always impressed me, and yep. the Nosler wasn't half bad at 0.519. That thing carries surprisingly well out there. We're talking about hunting bullets, yes, right? And, yes. And the, uh, this shows literally the evolution of the long range capable hunting bullet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When I when I saw how long that bullet was, it, uh, it surprised me. Yeah. Another advantage that PRC cases got is how little bullet intrusion down mm -hmm. into the case itself. With the seven Remington Magnum, that bullet, especially the long ones, long hunting bullets all, is taking up a lot of room down the case and going way down below the neck. Yep. And with the seven PRC, that's not the case. Yeah, and there's a couple important things there. You are limited with the long action on your cartridge overall length. That's just a fact, right? right? So you can't necessarily take the 7 rem mag and just say, oh, we're just going to shove the bullet out, right? Sh having the bullet further out gets it potentially out of the donut area, right? When you're repeatedly resizing your brass, the transition from the neck to the shoulder is an area where internally you get a donut buildup of brass. And when I chamber a rifle, I look at the bullet I'm going to be shooting, and I look at the neck, and I look at where do I need to be on my throat, you know, so that I cannot have that happen. That is possible with the 7 PRC and isn't with the 7 Red Mag. Okay, so let's talk loads then. Okay, factory loads. Uh, 7 moment Remington Magnum, been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. They've really refined these loads. And we're talking Remington's 175 is coming out of the bullet or coming out of the muzzle at 2,860 feet per second. Okay. And that's that's kind of a common area in there. Those high 28s, maybe 2,900 feet mm -hmm. per second out of a hunting rifle, even for a hand loader, it's it's hard to get that 175 up above 29 a bit and stay safe. Mm -hmm. um, 162 at around 2,940. Easy to hand load that up to 3,000 or a little more. Mm -hmm. um, and then the 150, kind of a screamer there at 3,000 feet per <laughs> second. I like yeah. that. Um, and your, your PRC is actually loaded a couple of thousand PSI higher than the old REM mag. And you've got that 180 at 2975, 175 hunting bullet yeah. at 3,000 feet per second. That's very That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the 160, and the reason it's also at 3,000 is because that's that CX. That's that solid, solid copper, copper one. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they, yeah, you don't want to push those too hard. A little bit more bearing surface, yeah. different metallurgy, different yes. deformation into the, into the rifling and all that. So not a huge difference here. No. Um, again, it comes down to twist rate. Twist rate is specced at 1 and 8 on the 7 PRC and between 1 and 9 to 1 and 10 on the 7 REM mag. And there's an important thing here. If you're federal and you're looking at coming out with factory hunting ammunition, you can't count on 1 and 9. You have to count on 1 and 10. Right, you might be able to produce specialty ammunition with, hey, this is one and nine or faster on the box, but that's not going to be the same kind of commonly available commodity ammunition that you'd find. So really, in my mind, the comparison for factory ammo is between one and eight and one and ten if you move between seven PRC and, and seven Ren Mag. And there's nothing wrong with the ammunition that's optimized for one and ten, right? Hunters have been using that for decades. But if you really are interested in more of a multi-purpose, longer range, optimized package, uh, then the decision is clear. Now, yes, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it before you're going to type it. I know what 5 or 10 or 100 of you are just about to say. Well, I had a custom 7 rem mag made and I had a 1 and 8 barrel put on there. Great. You know, you have something that's more or less, roughly, overall, equivalent to a 7 PRC. But if you're just going to buy a brand new rifle and you're trying to make the decision or if you want a rifle that's long range optimized and you want the option of the factory ammo, this is, is the true value proposition to me of stepping up to the newer 7 PRC. Yes. Uh, you, you don't give up anything by going to the 1 and 8. Right. You, true. You gain something, right. you don't lose anything. Right. And 
That's that's great. And then there's off the shelf ammo that mm -hmm. we sampled from Hornady. Right. That stuff shoots great. Yeah, people like to complain about too many new cartridges, but when it comes to Hornady, they are the masters at getting the entire industry aligned. That's why the Sammy stuff came out early. Uh, they've got factory rifles chambered day one. They've got folks like us that have already built rifles with content ready to go on day one. Um, really looking at the entire ecosystem and making sure that they've thought through every detail and gotten everyone on board. And it, it works, you know, the, you know, people would have said 6.5 PRC or 6.5 Creedmoor rather is gonna be a flash in the pan. It isn't, it's no. still here. Very right? popular. Yeah, so that kind of momentum, that kind of alignment, that kind of industry uh, momentum towards something will ensure that it's gonna be around for a longer period of time. I think so. I hope so. It's a good cartridge. We've worked with it enough, reloading it, um, shooting out of both rifles. Yeah, I, I hope it sticks around for a long mm -hmm. time. It's a, it's a good cartridge. Yep. Now, one of the tools that Hornady has that's free on their website is called Ford Off, or Four Degrees of Freedom is where that name comes from. And this is a ballistics calculator that you can use. And Guy has prepared some data here. We like to try and do kind of apples to apples uh, comparisons where, where possible. And here we've got two different bullets that uh, represent the instrumental velocity or the, the media, excuse me, not velocity, bullet weight, right? Or the canonical example of what that sweet spot uh, bullet weight would be for each of these. So do you want to walk us through kind of what you, what you did here? Sure, sure. And I would have loved to have tested the 175 in each one of them. Mm -hmm. Hornady doesn't make the 175 in factory ammo for the seven rim mag, they, their heaviest was the 162 ELDX, right. which looks just great to me on paper. Those are, that's very much like what I would expect out of a good hunting cartridge. And so I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the hunting cartridge that they've optimized for your seven PRC versus the hunting cartridge they've optimized for the seven rim mag. Yep. And so it's a little lighter on this, it's 162 versus 175. Velocity is down a bit with the REM mag. That's because mm -hmm. we can load the PRC a couple of thousand PSI higher. Mm -hmm. And so we've got similar velocities, similar trajectories, the edge and everything going to the PRC with its 175 at 3,000 feet per second. Yep. And as you, if this is only the 500. If you right. went all the way out to 1,000, you're going to see that difference exaggerated exponentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Um, you know, so, so 200 yard zero, which is pretty common for a lot of Western hunters, mm -hmm. and we're talking six and a half inches low at 300, <laughs> six inches low. Not much difference mm -hmm. there, but as that yardage increases, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I just had that uh, elk hunt few weeks ago, and I had to take a shot at 405 yards with my 30 out six. Right. I was glad I had an ELDX bullet loaded. It yeah, made that did, easier. You didn't have a reticle with your holdover etched in into the reticle, right? No, it's no. more hold on it's hair kind of, kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah and left into the wind and right. high, mm -hmm. and uh, sort of, you know, drop mm -hmm. it in a side pocket, and there we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but, but here, the, you know, the edge out, out at 500 yards, we start out 60 feet per second faster at the muzzle mm -hmm. with the PRC, but at 500 yards, we're up over 100 feet per second advantage on it. Wow. And a heavier bullet. And if you write at the transition of optimal bullet performance for whether it be a cup and core or a, or a solid copper, that 100 feet per second is, is meaningful. Yes, yeah, yeah. That, that could be the difference between expanding and probably not expanding enough. Right, yeah. yep. Very cool. So. Again, if you if you follow this trajectory data out to a thousand, everything gets even more compelling and more interesting on the on the PRC side. Uh, so you're going to take this guy hunting. I, I love this. I love pushing you into <laughs> the crazy optic on there. You know, uh, the the newer cartridge and and all this stuff. Uh, tell me about the load that you're planning. Yeah, I, like I said, I was really impressed with that 178 ELDX out of my 30 out six. And I said, well, let's try the 175. I mean, it's good enough for Hornady to offer it as a factory load, so let's mm -hmm. hand load with that. And like you mentioned, this is a 22 inch barreled rifle you built, which is unusual for a Magnum cartridge. It's yep. a little short, but we wanted that so you could suppress it or use a break or whatever, and not have a great big long barrel right. sticking out there. Yeah. So I said, okay, let's, let's go with that bullet and of course, Hornady brass, because um, who else make a brass for this right now? Right. And it is good stuff. Yep. Uh, Federal 215 Magnum primer. Okay. 
Yep. Um, and tried a powder I had not used before, Ramshot LRT. Mm -hmm. And that stuff is a ball powder. It meters very nicely. You can you could just use it in a powder measure and it nice. comes out pretty good. And I pushed, I started in at 77 grains, and it's kind of flying in the dark here because there wasn't a lot of published data out there. Right, that. right. So uh, there's, there was enough to say that this looks good. And pushed it on up to 80 and a half, which is a little hotter, mm -hmm. the half a grain over the highest published data I saw. No problem, and a little over 2,900 feet per second. Nice. Uh, yeah, and good accuracy. That's, that's awesome. It would be interesting to compare chronograph data between the Precision Hunter ammo yes. and and your loads. And when we got the rifle builders kit, that that was all we had to work with for the public launch and the two rifles. I think we had one box of the Precision Hunter 175s and one box of the Match 180 ELDM. <laughs> Both shot good. Yeah. Uh, the 180 ELDMs were just phenomenal. They are. Um, but like. Almost knocking on the door of 3,000 feet per second out of a 22-inch barrel. That's impressive. Boom. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, and then that bullet, right? Since this is the Hornady's focus on, on their hunting lineup for this mm -hmm. in the non-solid copper domain, um, you've got between 120 and 180 for typical bullet weight. So this is basically on the up on the upper end. Yes. For what's yes. traditional. And that's and that's what the PRC is all about is those heavier weight bullets. Mm -hmm. So, why not? Um, yeah, and that that gives you again that phenomenal BC, mm -hmm. and you need that one to eight twist to stabilize it. Yep. Yep. So. And that's that's what they specify. That's no, what it's all about. No big mystery there. Uh, yeah. And to review this particular build, so we got a Bergara Premier Action long action out of the box, like what you'd find from Brownells. You know, I thought, I want to do a full custom Vergara, right from scratch. And so we got the one and eight twist, 22 inch finished length uh, plank from Bartline. We did 28, like I previously mentioned, on the other rifle, so good comparison there. This Trigger Tech Diamond two stage, I'm liking it. Yes. For a hunting rifle. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels good, it, it's not, it's not some kind of hair trigger right. target thing. Right. Um, I forget what it breaks at, but it breaks really nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's a, it's a really nice one. Uh, Boyd's Agility Stock. We did a couple builds. This is the second build that we did with that one, and then the the Riton X7 Conquer 3 to 24 by 50. That like is I said, way different from my six power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have your holdover right on the reticle here, which would be, which would be really great. Not that you'll have to hold over a whole bunch with the seven uh, PRC. No. So, tell me about your son's rifle. Yeah, uh, Bergara Wilderness Ridge. Um, bought it for him last year as birthday present. You're nice. He he feels he feels very happy <laughs> with that. Uh, and, and he hunted with it this year. Did not get a shot at a mule deer, unfortunately. Uh, but next year. Yep. So there you go. It's uh, it's your basic one and nine and a half twist, mm -hmm. um, slightly heavier. I think they call that a number five contour, Bergara does, and it's got their omnidirectional muzzle mm -hmm. break up there. It's a very comfortable rifle to shoot. Yeah. So I'm very happy with it. It's uh, surprisingly accurate. I know Bergara made their name in accuracy, but I don't usually shoot a seven mag <laughs> into half inch groups at right. 100 yards. I'm That's with you. I, it's a struggle sometimes to keep the, uh, the bucking Bronco, as it were, under control. You know, the repeatability when, when you've got a lighter weight rifle that's heavy recoiling. And uh, yeah, really, really impressive uh, group, sir. Um, so that's the whole, that's kind of the whole story. We talked about the rifles. We talked about the ammunition. We talked about some of the scenarios here. So what, what, what are you concluding with? Tell me, tell me your wrap up thoughts and then give me your vote. Okay then. <laughs> well, it's not like the seven... Remington mag got worse or anything. It's right. just as good now as it's always yep. been. And with today's bullets, it's very, very effective. Um, mm -hmm. Remains very effective in the hunting fields. Uh, if you're going to go long, 7 PRC makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And ditches the belt. Mm -hmm. And if you want a heavy hunting bullet. Yeah. Right? It's a even good way to go. Even if you're not going long particularly, that, that opens up some, yeah. some new things, right? Um, so, at the end of the day, what's your vote? If I was buying a new rifle, yep. I'd probably go with a 7PRC. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but you're hunting 
a deer and you have the seven rem mag, then what's your thought there? I'm good to go. Roll with it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm good to go. Yeah. yeah. Mule deer, elk, mm -hmm. pronghorn, bear. Right. Yeah, I told you about the fellow who used one to drop a grizzly while I was yeah. in grizzly camp. Yep. With Barnes bullets and he did great. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it'll, it'll do it. So, so it didn't get worse. So you could go with either one, but if you were going to start from scratch, the, the sub PRC. Yes. Yep. My vote is solidly with the seven PRC uh, because I don't like the idea of the belt. It seems unnecessary and I don't have a seven rem mag actually. So I, I have been starting, you know, at this fresh, right. You know, and I feel like the seven PRC is better all around. It's uh, better ballistically. It has more versatility. It ditches the belt and it standardizes on that one and eight twist barrel. So that's my vote. What we want to know from you is what is your vote? Seven rim mag or seven PRC? Drop a comment and be a part of that discussion. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the great preparation on all this data and stuff, guys. This has been Thank awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting me shoot your pretty cool rifle there. Well, more on that later. <laughs> That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.